In a world shaped by conflict and power, every strike, every decision, and every drone in the sky tells a deeper story. Welcome to Delta History, where we go beyond the headlines to uncover the turning points that shape modern warfare and global geopolitics. From the shadows of strategy to the front lines of battle, this is the war you were never meant to see, told with facts, analysis, and cinematic precision. This is Delta History. The skies over Eastern Europe are no longer just a stage for reconnaissance or intimidation. They've become an open arena where the most advanced drones clash with high-value targets in real time. In a move that has shocked the global community and left Moscow scrambling for answers, a United States MQ-9 Reaper drone has reportedly launched a direct strike on Russian positions. The footage? Captured. Shared. Analyzed frame by frame by militaries and civilians alike. This isn't just another drone flight, it's a signal, a sign that the rules of engagement are changing and the age of unmanned precision warfare has fully arrived. But how did this all unfold? Why was an American MQ-9 operating in this contested space? And what does this mean for the future of the war in Ukraine? And perhaps, the stability of NATO's relationship with Russia? In this report, we dive deep into everything. The tactical details of the strike, how the Reaper pulled it off, Russia's military response, and what this unprecedented action signals for the future of international warfare. Let's begin by understanding the beast at the center of this story, the General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper. Unlike its predecessor, the MQ-1 Predator, the Reaper is designed not just for surveillance but for high-precision lethal missions. It's equipped with Hellfire missiles, GBU-12 Paveway-2 laser-guided bombs, and advanced synthetic aperture radar. Operated remotely from control stations thousands of miles away, the Reaper is a silent assassin in the sky. With an endurance of up to 27 hours, a cruising speed of 200 miles per hour, and an operational ceiling of 50,000 feet, it can loiter undetected above the battlefield for hours, collecting intelligence, tracking targets, and striking with pinpoint accuracy. For years, it has been deployed in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and Africa. But now, the Reaper has entered one of the most dangerous war zones in the world, the skies near Russia's western border. According to multiple reports and emerging video footage, the MQ-9 Reaper conducted a coordinated strike near a strategic Russian outpost in occupied territory, possibly in Crimea or near Belgorod. The attack was captured on high-resolution thermal and visual sensors, showing the exact moment when a Hellfire missile detonated near a Russian radar installation. Intelligence sources suggest the target was a mobile air defense unit or a command and control hub, both critical to Russian operations in the region. What's shocking is the clarity of the strike. The camera locks on to the target, a brief pause, then impact, followed by a secondary explosion, likely indicating ammunition or fuel detonation. No civilians, no collateral damage, a surgical kill. While the Pentagon hasn't formally confirmed the strike, US officials did acknowledge a high-value operation involving unmanned aerial systems in Eastern Europe. Was this authorized by NATO? a covert operation under Ukrainian command with American support, or an independent U.S. military action. This is where the story becomes murky. Officially, the U.S. and NATO have not deployed offensive forces directly into Russian-held territory. American drones typically operate in international airspace, often skirting the edge of confrontation. But this incident could represent a serious escalation. Some analysts believe the Reaper was operating under Ukrainian control, supplied and maintained by the U.S., but piloted from a ground station in Kiev. Others argue it was a U.S. Air Force special operations mission, possibly a response to recent Russian provocations. Let's not forget, just weeks ago, a Russian missile struck dangerously close to U.S. personnel near the Polish border.
The Reaper strike might be a calculated message. Cross that line again, and we will respond. Still, the political implications are enormous. A direct American drone strike on Russian targets, whether officially acknowledged or not, could easily be interpreted by the Kremlin as an act of war. And yet, strangely, Russia has remained mostly silent. One would expect the Russian government to respond with outrage. Yet, their official channels have been oddly quiet. Instead of direct threats, the Kremlin issued a vague statement condemning unidentified aerial aggression in contested airspace and promised a full investigation. There was no direct mention of the MQ-9, no declaration of retaliation. Behind closed doors, however, the atmosphere has reportedly shifted. Russian air defense protocols have been updated. New orders have been issued to engage any high-altitude drone activity near key bases. Electronic Wharf, our units have been rapidly deployed across Crimea and Belgorod. Some insiders believe this silence is strategic. If Russia openly admits to being struck by a U.S. drone, they would be compelled to respond militarily, something they may not be ready for especially with their forces already stretched thin across Ukraine. Others suggest that Russia fears the capabilities of modern, unmanned U.S. precision weapons, recognizing that their aging radar systems and air defenses are no match for Reapers silently circling overhead. While this incident may be the first documented strike, it is far from the first appearance of the MQ-9 Reaper in the region. Since early 2023, radar traces and sightings have suggested that Reapers have been flying regular ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions along the Ukrainian-Russian front lines. In several incidents, Russian fighter jets attempted to intercept or harass these drones, sometimes even performing dangerously aggressive maneuvers. The infamous Black Sea incident, where a Russian Su-27 dumped fuel on a U.S. MQ-9, causing it to crash, comes to mind. That incident was seen by many as a deliberate provocation, possibly planting the seeds for the strike we're seeing now. But this latest strike signals a new chapter. The Reaper is no longer just watching the war, it's participating in it, and that could dramatically shift battlefield dynamics. With Reapers in the air, Russian logistics hubs, SAM sites, artillery, and mobile command centers are now highly vulnerable. These drones can remain overhead for hours, waiting for a target to present itself. They are persistent, precise, and deadly. It's a nightmare scenario for any traditional military, and a dream come true for Ukraine. However, the use of a U.S.-built MQ-9 to strike Russian targets raises urgent questions not just about tactics, but about law, diplomacy, and the future of global conflict. Every drone strike near or within Russian territory increases the chance of a major escalation. One misstep could bring NATO into direct conflict with Russia. There's also the legal ambiguity. If Ukraine operates the drone, does that remove U.S. responsibility? Or is the provider of lethal systems always seen as complicit? The answer is unclear. And that's what makes this moment so dangerous. Beyond the battlefield, this strike has already gone viral. It's been repurposed for propaganda by both sides. Ukraine hailing it as proof of Western superiority, Russia using it to claim foreign interference. Meanwhile, nations like China and Iran are watching closely studying how unmanned systems are quietly rewriting the rules of warfare. The MQ-9 Reaper strike has opened a Pandora's box. We can expect Russia to increase investments in drone hunting technologies and electronic warfare systems. NATO will likely expand drone operations across Eastern Europe, especially in Poland, Romania, and the Black Sea. Ukraine, energized by the results, will likely push for more aggressive support possibly including MQ-1C Grey Eagles or loitering munitions like the Switchblade 600. There are already whispers of new drone corridors being carved out, safe lanes for persistent ISR and strike missions, where no American pilot has to risk their life. But Russian targets are still vulnerable from the sky. We are not witnessing science fiction. We are witnessing a new reality. 
a drone war on the actual front lines of Europe. One drone, one precision strike, one shift in global perception, and just like that, the war changed. Thank you for joining us for this in-depth breakdown. For more battlefield analysis, military strategy, and frontline reports from the world's most dangerous zones, subscribe to Delta History, where war, technology, and truth intersect.